This is CyberSound, your simplified and fundamentals-focused source for all things cybersecurity, with your hosts, Jason Pufall and Stephen Mareska. Welcome to CyberSound. I'm your host, Jason Pufall. Joining me today, as always, is Steve Mareska and Matt Fasaro. Welcome, hey, guys. Hey. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit, I think, you know, incident response and maybe even sort of incident detection today, uh, really focusing our discussion on that first 48 hours. You know, you, you've had an event, you come into work, uh, you have the telltale signs of an incident. Uh, probably a good spot to start is right there, right? What what are those telltale signs, right? What what causes people to call us typically? Uh, how do they know they've even been attacked? I, I'd say that tends to start in confusion. You know, there are a lot of miscellaneous reports that don't really seem connected to one another, but widespread across an organization, right? It's usually a, a downtime report. It, yeah, exactly. Right? Downtime, yeah. somebody can't log in, an application's slow. You know, yeah. what do we do now? So you don't think more specifically, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of, hey, I see a note on my screen that wasn't there yesterday, right? Like that really obvious ransomware thing. It, it might be ransomware, but, you know, we're, we're starting generally here. Perhaps it's in the preamble, right? It You don't know that you've necessarily been hit. If, if there's something blinking red and screaming at you, that's one thing, right? But yeah, I think we, we're talking more along the lines of people that don't have or maybe don't have access to um, – you know, an alert somewhere that they, they didn't get an email. Nobody called them. They're just walking into work and something's wrong, right? Okay. Joe IT guy just got back from vacation. Well, it, and actually, <laughs> I think go. in a way we're, we're we're happy if Joe IT guy is there, right? I mean, it, it's probably even some user that just showed up early for work and is then trying to figure out who to call and what to do. Honestly, that's a really good example. Uh, multiple incidents have started precisely there. Somebody shows up, an administrative assistant needs to print something. The print tray has 400 <laughs> copies of something odd and another language in it. This is strange. Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, so many small businesses don't have that IT team behind them or, or the security expert behind them that is already telling them something's wrong, right? The, the, these are the indicators that they get, these non-specific things that they see when they're trying to use their applications. Like like Steve said, log into something and it doesn't work. Um, you know, you, you can't get to the internet. It's a lot of times just small indicators to the actual user. So the uh, it sounds like really what you're saying is if you you know if you see something say something uh, to some degree right <laughs> uh, I, I mean you know it, it's tongue in cheek of hair but it, especially small organizations it is really I see something that doesn't feel right or you know my my environment isn't behaving as it did you know when I left work yesterday or or whatever right yeah I think it's fair to say that if it's an attack that took place over the course of you know a month or a week. If you look back in retrospect, there are almost always little strange signs that make sense after the attack has become more obvious that could have been triggers for investigation, like something in the printer tray, like a slow system that you can't log into, like, you know, somebody who has a really good handle on their password locking, getting locked out. You know, it shouldn't happen. They shrug it off. They think it's a typo. They move on. But, you know, it, it's a it's part of the preamble. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess there is something to that if you see something, say something, right? There's been so many times, especially, you know, back in the day when I worked in, uh, you know, like an MSP service where I was working a help desk, um, we would find out about problems that have been going on for a year and someone just <laughs> right. decided that today was the day they'll put that ticket in. <laughs> right, and they, well, they almost become normal, right? So yeah, it, it, it yeah. acts messed up every day and you're like, well, that's just the way it is. Yep. Um, you, I, your point actually, Steve, though, was a good one, right? Jump – my comment of jumping straight to the, hey, you've gotten a, a ransomware note on your screen. You know, a lot of times that is the culmination of, you know, potentially, you know, multiple weeks or longer of effort by the threat actor. Um, and so it is, it, a lot of these things are just the telltale signs. And, and potentially if you report them early enough, and, it, and, and frankly, if you can get people's attention to, pay, to, to do something about them, you might be able to ward off uh, the, sort of a more sophisticated, sort of bigger impact type attack. Right. I mean, I, I would say that if your initial indicator is a ransom note, you've already missed a bunch of other right. suggestions that something's amiss. Um, it's unfortunate, but you know the truth is that attacks do, on average, uh, persist and dwell before actually being visible in the course of you know ninety days. The, the average is coming down. It used to be, you know, one hundred and eighty something north of two hundred. But the truth is that it's getting faster and faster. But it's still it's still certainly the case that most attacks are multiple days long. 
Right. So there's an opportunity. It's only getting faster for those organizations that can actually detect these things, right? right? Uh, that's the key. I think those those dwell times are still pretty valid for for small businesses, especially because um, they they just don't have they don't have a sim. They don't have well, they might have like an IDS or a good firewall, but I'm sure it was installed by you know either an MSP that they dealt with once or you know their uncle or something like that that said, oh, you know that that Palo Alto is a good thing to get or that Fortinet's a good thing to get. You should put that in there. Nobody's watching it, right? And right. that's the key, right? <laughs> if you're not looking at the logs, yeah. it's it, it, you know it might it might stop a few things, but you've probably you know stopped addressing policy updates, right? Not necessarily paying attention to uh, log events that come out of it, right? So so let's talk more generally. You know, at the beginning staging of an attack, um, threat actor has access to the environment. They've gained a credential through phishing. Maybe that's the first warning sign. You know that people have received suspicious emails. You've put it off. You know it's constant background noise, you dealt with it. But it's an indicator that at least if it seemed written for your organization, that it might be targeted in a way that's different from your your average drive-by fish. Thereafter, the threat actor tries to gain access. And then what? You know, there are some preamble steps that are relatively consistent. Yeah. Sometimes, especially today, uh, there's a lot more people using Multi-factor. I mean, it's being pushed by all the insurance companies now, so I'd expect a lot of people have it on now. So you may you may even get multi-factor requests that you didn't initiate. That's a good one. Usually, the app has some way to report the uh, uh, the suspicious login. If not, you know, tell tell whoever is in charge of IT in that in that business that you're in, right? Because um, that's probably the next step. You'll get authentications from places that don't initiate from your users. And it's really tough if you don't have tools already staring at that stuff, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times we see that after the fact, really, right? right? It, it, but but you're right about the the two factor prompts. Right? Two factors becoming much more common. Uh, you know, insurance providers are pushing it. It's a, kind yeah. of a standard practice now. Um, and if you do get unexpected requests for that second factor, you, you know, they, they should be reported immediately. Right. A, a lot of businesses are, are using things like three six five now, right? Because it's got email and all the office applications that they need. So most small businesses have this in play. And if you have multi-factor on, you'll get that notification when it right. comes through. Right. Otherwise, you know, you're going to have to have your, your uh, auditing logs turned on and sent somewhere. That's more challenging for a small business with no IT department. But, but I would assert, assert that it's certainly true that many small businesses, even if they have uh, you know Azure or Office 365 MFA, something to that effect, they probably have some infrastructure on-prem right. that's less well defended. Right. Protocols that don't marry well with MFA, something to that effect. So, all right, you've gotten a couple of those, uh, I don't know, odd uh, MFA alerts. Okay, deal with it, shrug it off, figure something else is going on. Now they've tried to come in through, you know, a less protected system, less protected service. They've gained access. Their initial step thereafter is, hey, what kind of stuff can I touch? What kind of privileges do I have? And, you know, that that makes some noise. Yeah. I mean, you'll, again, you'll see fail bargains and things like that with lateral movement, which will, those will be tough. If you, Again, a lot of this is if you don't have tools, you're not going to see a lot of it. Um, the things you may see are, hey, you know, my account's locked out or, you know, I'm pretty sure I remember my password. This doesn't seem to be working, right? You'll, you'll get those requests a lot. Um, those are those are typically indicators of we've someone has tried lateral movement. They tried too many times. Now the account doesn't work. Now they've succeeded. They've logged into a you know terminal services system. They're trying to access some, you know, a local app there. All right. Uh, I'm another guy in the office. I see somebody who's no longer working here, who I guess still has an active account logged into that system. That's odd. Yeah, I mean, you'll see that. You'll see uh, programs dropped onto desktops sometimes that you don't remember ever interacting with, things moved around, um, other things installed into the system. A lot of times, too, you know, if, if they're trying exploits, uh, maybe they're an unskilled person trying right. to get into uh, a system, you'll get crashes, right? Uh, they'll they'll try some things that are known to be unstable. They'll crash the system. I, you know, a good one is a lot of the um, a lot of the RDP attacks right. that can actually blue screen a system. So if you're if you're getting suddenly system instability, you know that's another indication to go go look. There, there might be something going on there. Or another echo of the same thing. Your uh, 
AV quarantine log suddenly right. fills up on a particular set of systems, that's probably somebody screwing around trying to find something to exploit or move elsewhere. Yeah, that's that's a big one. There's so many uh, small businesses that their users will get notifications in AV and they kind of just go, ah, I'll take care of it. Or it says it was blocked. It's fine. Right? I must be taken care of. Sure, it might have caught that one thing, but there could have been several other attempts. You should probably report it. Uh, or, you know, if you're part of the IT team, it's time to start investigating. Like, how did it come in? Um, was it just a drive-by on a website or something like that? Or was it something more serious? So, I, th I mean, I think that's a really good segue is a lot of this is focused on, you know, an end user identifies or notices something that just is, is atypical, right? Yeah. They've reported it to an IT person who potentially now is overwhelmed, right? Especially in a smaller business, it might be, you know, one or two people who are dealing with, you know, every user complaining about something maybe somewhat different, right? Yeah, I mean, all the examples that we saw could be, could present themselves in the early stages of a, of a typical ransomware attack. So, you know, it's really important that the IT person take these seriously and potentially, you know, reach out early for assistance. Right, right. We're in an inflection point here. Right. You know, we've shifted to IT. They've been notified three or four different ways. Uh, maybe they do have quarantine uh, from AV that's starting to produce a, a trail. Um, my initial suggestion is really what's been caught. It tells you what has been attempted. It, like, for example, if I'm an IT guy and I see that my AV uh, log has produced indicators that I have password stealing malware, uh, you know, that's a real substantial escalation in severity because it means that an attacker is capable of taking passwords, credentials, maybe obtaining those of an administrator and moving on. That means you know that they have bigger targets in mind that they might have ransomware as a next step. At, at the very least, they're going to compromise more infrastructure. So, so we're, I mean, we're trying to spend some time here on you know, how do you know if you're attacked? And I think we have identified a whole variety of sort of you know, IT system anomalies that, you know, when, when combined or when looked at as a whole, sort of gives you a better sense that there's something significant that happened. And I think, you know, that's what we see so often is these might trickle in over, you know, potentially over 48 hours, right? And it's easy to say, ah, man, Steve called me, had a password issue. I dealt with that. You know, now you're quiet because you feel satisfied that you're, you're kind of working. And then, you know, then Matt calls because he's got something crazy with the printer. And they could feel like isolated events to some to some degree. And, and to the IT person might be like, ah, today was a pain. Yeah, you know, I just had a, a bunch of folks call me with random things. Y you do want to think, I think, as a, as an, as an IT person, a little bit more globally when you start to see these and just sort of balance them against what your normal day looks like. And if it's an unusual day, r really try to look at them as a whole and say, you know, is there anything here that, you know, any kind of underlying issue that I might be able to address or anything, any commonality that I need to pay attention to? Yeah. It, but one thing we used to always say, uh, you know, when we were doing consulting for small businesses is write this stuff down when it happens. Time frames are always mm -hmm. really important. Right. That's that's one. It's always hard to come into an incident or help a company with something like this when they have no idea when it actually happened. They said uh, sometime last week somebody complained about right. something. and I, I don't know. Right. <laughs> what do you do with that? Right. So even if it's you just write write it down in a notebook, I mean, we don't really care what it is. Right. Uh, if you have a ticketing system. Great. A lot of places don't. Right. But if you got it in a notebook. Great. We know at least when something happened. Um, don't brush it off. Um, I, I, and I think a lot of users aren't going to report these things. They feel like they're doing something right, wrong. That's true. Right. So I, maybe kind of getting a culture together of, yeah, it's okay if you report an issue like this to me. Right? So uh, could I, so, you know, we talked about this being maybe the first 48 hours. So I'd say yeah. a, a, a predecessor to all of this would be have a tabletop in your company that discusses what you do in an incident. And you know, we, we've seen them constructed a whole variety of ways, right? It's IT people who are going through a simulated exercise to talk about how they might respond. But it's valuable, especially in smaller companies, to simply say, you know, if you see anomalies, here's who you call, here's what you can expect from a response, like here's how you deal with these. They don't have to be, you know, full day, really complicated right. events. You sit around your conference room cable, talk for an hour about you know, what you should do if you if you feel you see something that's anomalous. Those are really valuable exercises that can make this whole process, right, the detection and then ultimately the resolution of these a lot, a lot quicker. 
Right, especially if you have as an outcome the development of an incident response plan of some sort. We, we talked about a variety of indicators that are, you know, in isolation not a big deal, but if they're clustered, per your point, they have you know chronology to them that makes them atypical. That tells you in a plan or in a tabletop exercise that you need to pivot to other sources of right. data. Right, your next steps. Network logs. Hey, are there are anomalous uh, transfers of data out of the network. Things of that nature. They, they really help to frame the rest of the attack if one is ongoing. Right, right. Um, and, you know, in that first 48, you honestly may want to reach out to your uh, – cyber insurance, your li cyber liability insurance carrier, right? I mean, they're going to, especially for smaller businesses, may very well provide some resources or at least some guidance on how to approach this. I think that one of the things that we see so often is when incidences begin, uh, nobody's really sure what the, what the correct next steps always are, right? And in my opinion, I often tend to wait a little too long, kind of hoping things might resolve themselves or maybe they can deal with them on that case-by-case -case basis. You know, a lot of times we see them just sort of grow in complexity and, and ultimately turn into that bigger event. Right. Yeah, or it's the the knee jerk reaction and everything gets shut off, right? <laughs> yeah. Which is, I mean, it's worth noting. It's try to avoid that. If you, if you are feeling very nervous about something that's happened, unplugging network cables that's probably okay. Uh, we like to keep machines on yeah, if don't we can, turn them off. so so that when you do have someone come in. You know, we, we, there's something for us to look at. Right. Right. Yeah. But, we need uh, evidence in order to be helpful after the fact. Right. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. You know, it, it's so hard to say, you know, here are the five things that will present themselves in every you know, IT incident. Right. Because that's just it's simply not the reality. I think we see a lot of ransomware. Right. And I think the items that you've highlighted around, um, you know, sort of Credential misuse certainly is one of them. Obviously, that ransomware note is, you know, is a key telltale sign. Um, you know, encrypted files, things like that. But you know, there there are other right. There's other cyber attacks that that happen, right? I mean, there's you know some that just exist for the pure intention of stealing data. Some of them are disruptive. Um, I think fundamentally, it is it really is. If you see something that's anomalous, you report it to the person you feel is most appropriate. Um, and then, you know, the person who gets it reported to should really treat it seriously and, and pay attention to it because it, it, it really is just it's the world we live in now. And we see, you know, companies that would probably argue that they don't have data that's that that's that attractive to an attacker fall victim to attacks all the time. Right. Because there's value in just obtaining the data and potentially, you know, leveraging it for extortion purposes or publishing it. Right. Any number of things we see. So um, any kind of last thoughts around something to detect or something that you feel we've missed? I'd, I'd say that reports may not make sense. They may be unrelated. They might be coincidental. But if you help your future self out by taking good notes, as Matt said earlier, it, you know, it, you just help improve outcomes if there is something that does transpire. So, you know, give yourself a leg up in the future. Yeah, it, it's, it's a simple step. I mean, even if you just force anyone that has an issue to – yeah, I know you've. I know we talked about it, you know, at lunch. But can you send me an email just so I have it? And right. So if I have to go back, I can right. do something about this. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So I mean, I think on that, right? This it's a pretty straightforward topic in a lot of ways. I mean, I think we're simply advocating do a little preparation ahead of time so people understand what they should do if they identify something. Don't ignore, you know, what we would say are telltale signs. And frankly, I think there are things that everybody can recognize really, um, and then you know, react to them. With a sense of urgency, I think to some degree, if you're if you're on that IT practitioner side, um, and as always, you know, thanks for joining us today. We 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 hope you got some value out of this, and you know, it gets you thinking a little bit about incident response. Um, if you'd like to continue the conversation, feel free to reach out to us on LinkedIn at Vancord, uh, and we're happy to field questions and, and answer things going forward. Thanks, guys, for joining. Sure, take care. Stay vigilant, stay resilient. This has been Cyber Sound.